I was born in Indianapolis, Indiana, September the 22nd, 1941. Early childhood, we lived out in the community, um, uh, Valley Mills, outside of uh, Indianapolis, um, west, and we um, enjoyed living pretty much country, but we didn't have a, we weren't in the country, but there was houses around. I was uh, uh, probably not the best student in school. Um, I was enjoying myself. I enjoyed myself all the time in school. So um, I actually uh, got my my initials on the report card because my initials are D and F. So I did get my initials on the report card. Um, but I made it through high school and then went into the Army, went to mechanic school in the Army and was one of the top two in our mechanics class and I thought, my gosh, I guess I can do this. When I went to mortuary school, I was on the dean's list in mortuary school. So after I got out of school and settled down a little bit, then I started uh, realizing I could uh, hit the books and do all right. I w <clears throat> it was 1959 and they were getting ready for the draft. They were doing a lot of things. I joined the National Guard. Um, in the St. Petersburg unit. My brother, my oldest brother Joe was already in the guard um, and my brother Mark joined and then I joined. Um, then I spent, uh, that I was of the first group that, of the guard that they made go to six months active duty. So after graduation that summer I went to six months active duty and then come back to the guard. Never got deployed anywhere, just stayed in the guard here. I worked in the funeral home, in my dad's funeral home in Tampa. He did buy one uh, into a funeral home in Tampa when I was in high school. So I worked there uh, part-time during after school, nights, and things. When I got out of the military, I got a job um, in a funeral home in Tampa and started my internship then. My dad, when he sold his interest in Tampa, he still didn't have his Florida license. So he <clears throat> found <clears throat> a funeral home here in Venice that would take him on to finish his internship. And when he got um, three weeks from his internship, uh, they fired him because they was afraid when he got his license, he would open the place here. So he ended up going finding another guy that give him his three, week, three weeks internship and was going to open a funeral home in Inglewood. Well, the guy decided that he was going to open in Inglewood, so my dad said the only place to go would be right here. So if the guy would fire him for those kind of reasons, he might as well stay. So when we first opened, you couldn't come in this door and meet anybody other than a Farley. He, Dad opened the funeral home. My brother Joe already had his license, so that was the, the license we operated on when we first opened. Then Mark and myself went to school. Our school was a, was a trade school that was a accelerated, we carried about an 18 hour load, so we did it for 12 months. So we started at eight in the morning and ended up at, 4, 30, 5 o'clock in the afternoon with our classes every day. Um, so we, but back then in funeral service uh, in Florida, you served three years internship first, then you went to school, and then you took your boards. So by the time we got to mortuary school, we were pretty seasoned in bombers and did, did, did well in the whole process. I really enjoyed the people part of the of the funeral profession. You meet so many nice, wonderful, great people, um, and they become you serve them, and then they become lifelong friends. I have three three daughters, um, and. Um, 
kind of an interesting thing. Um, we had two children, and we decided that that was it. We were going to stop at two. Well, I have an oops. I had a vasectomy, it grew back, and my oops is my daughter Michelle. My dad had uh, 17 grandchildren. Now, four, four boys that are funeral directors, 17 grandchildren, and only one grandchild became a funeral director, and that was my oops. So that was my ticket out. Now tell me I'm not blessed. <clears throat> I've always said that I've got um, th three daughters, female dog. I'm the, I don't have a voice. One is a school teacher and the other teaches uh, gymnastics. Um, so both, both daughters are uh, active in teaching and doing a great job at that too. When Michelle decided, my daughter Michelle decided she wanted to go to college and be more, um, she wanted to be a funeral director from third grade. She had already made up her mind in third grade she wanted to be a funeral director. Her and her girlfriend, her girlfriend's father was a minister, so her girlfriend decided she was going to be a minister and Michelle's going to be a funeral director, and they would just run services together for forever. Her girlfriend became a nurse. She never got to the, to the minister part, but Michelle got hers. When Michelle graduated from mortuary school, um, I told her that she needed to find a job someplace else. I didn't want her just coming to work here. She needed to find out what the other side of the world looked like. The largest corporation in in funeral service is Service Corporation International, and they ask they ask her to come to work for them. They begged her to come to work for them, and I told her, "Pick wherever you want, but you're going to work someplace else first and find out how the other uh, half of the world lives." My friend in Port Charlotte, a funeral director buddy of mine, he wanted her. She went to work for him, and uh, worked for him for couple, three years, and then my manager quit, and she said, Dad, it's time for me to come home, and I said, come on home. When I, when I sold the funeral home to my daughter and son-in-law, um, we left for a month so that they could get acclimated to that staff, and we weren't um, involved in whatever could be the problems that needed to be come up with. And I went to, I still own the cemetery. The three cemeteries that we had when we opened the funeral home, uh, one was Inglewood, Sarasota Memorial, and one up in Nokomis, a little church cemetery, and that was restricted to really church members, but that was our options. Um, long distance to get to Sarasota, and then uh, Inglewood, we were just not happy with the way they operated. So I kept saying over and over again, uh, we need, need to have our own cemetery. So I put the group, a group together and we, the, of investors, and we st uh, decided to buy some land. We found the land, went to the Sarasota County Commission to get a license to, uh, or get it zoned so that we could have a cemetery. The state of Florida required you to have a permit that showed that there was a need. Um, so we were in the process of putting that all together and the, the Florida Supreme Court threw out the need law at the time we were in the process. So I went back to Tallahassee with the application when they threw out the need law and we got our permit. The, the county, once we got our permit, we went to the county and had the property lined up to buy. Uh, they would not zone that for a cemetery because the neighbors said, you know, there will be uh, ghosts and, and the 
everything would be haunted in the neighborhood. So they complained. The, the county commission in their wisdom said, you find a piece of property without any home within one mile and we will rezone it for you to do it. We went to a friend of ours who had a piece of property that where we are now located, there was not a house within one mile. We opened our cemetery in 1975. Um, within that mile right now, there's uh, 5,000 homes. <laughs> They all come around, but we're, we're already there, so they're going to have to live with our ghost and our haints. Probably one of the standouts was we have a YMCA that was, um, well, there's two I'll talk about. YMCA that was in financial trouble, and um, I decided we needed to save that Y somewhere and put the group together. We called ourselves the YMCA Must Stay Committee and we got the money together to pay off the mortgage and, and save the Y. The Y is just so much of an integrated part of the, of the city uh, and, and life that needed to be. They're doing so much for children and youth and people's health. Second was, is, <clears throat> there's two old hotels the first two hotels that were built in the city of Venice were fixing to go under the wrecking ball. And myself and my dad and two partners, we bought that building, those buildings, and kept them from being destroyed. They're still uh, here today, built in 1926 and still main features of downtown. Would have been a wrong thing to destroy two nice pieces of history. And they were they were well-built buildings in the first place, and they're still standing and well-built today. I guess if you'd go back to the proudest and happiest, it would probably be uh, the birth of the children. You know, um, there's my, my whole life, like I say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed my whole life has been uh, proud and happy and I got, I've got to do everything that anybody wanted to do. I got elected to public office. I got elected to public office without opposition. You know, just name it, things over and over and over again. You know, to, to have this business uh, prosper like it has prospered. To start a cemetery from scratch and have it doing wonderful, just over and over and over and over.